are you sick of the virtual interviews or are you hanging in there? I'm hanging in there. I'm good. I'm, I'm like excited. It's always a, it's always a contradicting feeling. Cause I'm like <gasps> press interviews. I'm like, what do I say? How do I speak? And then like, as soon as you start and you're in a flow, you're like, wait, I love talking about this. Like, yes. this is, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm excited about the project. I'm excited about the character and usually it's fabulous people. And yeah, it's fun. I just gotta, you know, it's, a, it's that thing when they're like, um, whatever, you know, and like you're, they say like, oh, if you're anxious, if you tell yourself you're excited, you know what I mean? It's the yeah. same chemical oh, yeah. response. So I am excited. I love that. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put it out there. Well, I want to start with telling you a little story. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to make it short, but I okay. feel like you've, I have a very personal connection to the Gilded Age because I grew up in Rhode Island. Mm-hmm. So I, when I was a kid, I would go to Newport and I would take tours of the mansions. Sure. Right. Specifically the breakers, which was uh-huh. at Vanderbilt's. And I remember as a kid, like I would walk away just feeling like I got educated on their tragic lives and how they all like died young, but you know, and the builders of America, these men, but I yeah. never found out really anything about the women, especially mm. Alice Vanderbilt. Yeah. And then cut to the year before COVID, I went home for Christmas and my mom and I decided to go do the, the breakers, uh, like Christmas tour because they, yeah. they, you know, they make they it special. Sure. It. Yeah. And they had this really cool display of Alice's China that she would put out for her secret women's suffrage parties uh-huh. that she held. And they said they were white, just beautiful white China with, it would say votes for women on it. That's and so I was cool. like, this is so cool. It's like, That's why didn't so I learn cool. about this? I was younger. Why didn't yeah. we talk about this? She was just like this cold woman in my mind. And now all of a sudden yeah. she was this force behind the scenes creating change. Mm-hmm. And then cut to me watching the first episode of The Gilded <laughs> Age. And I was reminded of that. And I was like, how mm-hmm. cool of Julian. Well, he's a genius, obviously. Mm-hmm. But you know, he's really showing these impressive, strong, resilient women behind these, you know, famous men Mm -hmm. that, Mm -hmm. you know, really had to find clever ways of navigating this like patriarchal landscape. Um, So that leads to my first question. (laughs) I wanted to tell you that story. Um, I'm so glad you did. That's fabulous. I wish I I I would have seen the little China because we we filmed in in the breakers. Oh, you did? Later in the season. I can't oh, tell you so about cool. it, but later. Oh my gosh. I actually like, I have an ashtray in my bedroom. Of, they like, you know, made all these yeah. little gifts. But um, how is the Gilded Age kind of a love letter to those women of the time who, you know, have barely been recognized for their part in history? Sure. You know, I, I think that it was definitely the women of the time period that sort of shaped society. Sure, the men were there working and, and bringing in the money, but it was it was women who ran the house. It was women who ran all the, the business aspect of the house as well, because it's, it's, it's like um, navigating and, 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 and sort of dictating and telling everybody what to do. And, and in the sense of like the butlers, the ladies maids, they have to make sure everything's running. If there's going to be, if there's going to be, um, if the husband's coming home from meeting everything, you know what I mean? It's like, it's not only where they, they weren't just sitting around and, and, and knitting all day. They basically ran the business of the house as well as society. Um, it was women who, who um, sort of, yeah, who, who held the reins of, 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 of controlling and, and, and establishing what society was and who was allowed in and, and what um, sort of parties and, and, and feasts and fiestas and everything that would, that would happen, you know, was run by the women. Um, and I think it's really interesting that this show has so many nuanced female perspectives on it. You have Peggy who wants to be an aspiring writer who's also dealing with um, obviously sort of the, the race and class issues uh, of that time. You have Marion, who's also dealing with the class issues coming from Pennsylvania, rural Pennsylvania, and moving to New York with her thoroughly, um, you know, old money uh, aunts. Yeah. And she is um, free thinking and bold and is adamant about living her own life. And then you have Bertha and then you have Agnes, you know, you have everybody's, um, I mean, you have all these different female perspectives on on that time and how they want to approach things. And I think it's beautiful. I think I kind of forgot about that until I rewatched the first episode. Because when you're reading the scripts and you're filming, mm-hmm. and I'm going on a tangent, tangent, but like you, you see you see it sort of from your perspective and being able to to watch the show, you're like, oh damn, right? There are so many fabulous, fabulous female characters in this show. 
Oh my gosh, absolutely. Um, and I've only seen the first episode because I I got access to more, but I said, Meg, this is a show I want to look forward to every Sunday. Like I want to give myself that gift mm-hmm. of watching the show every Sunday. That's fabulous. I love off. it. That's, you know, you have I my approval. Really hard. Um, I want to talk about it with my parents who are still in mm-hmm. Rhode Island, you know. So That's getting, so cool. That's so cool. Like I want to experience it with them. Um, but yeah, I love that you were speaking about all of the, you know, how these female characters are so complex and, and how they're sort of battling each other, but also have more in common than they realize. And mm-hmm. I think that's where some of this quote unquote, I was thinking about the concept of cattiness mm-hmm. and how, um, really cattiness coming from women isn't this, you know, vicious, um, I don't know. It's not vicious. It mm-hmm. really is actually coming from a need to sort of protect and preserve, Oh, sure. Protect their own. Yeah. And I think we really Mm -hmm. see that. I think that um, we really see that like in this, in this series, or at least in the first episode, this idea of like, right? Yeah. I was just just going to, sorry, interrupt. I was just going to say that it's like, it's, it's love and sacrifice is what's, is what's driving them. It's what's driving um, Agnes Van Ryn, who comes across as cold and and calculated. And this is, you know, she, she, she follows the rules and this is the way it is and won't budge or grow. Um, but it's out of love and sacrifice for being able to take care of her sister, being able to take care of Mary and to be able to leave her son um, wealth. And, and because without money and, and a title, you don't really have a life in, in high society in New York. Same thing with Bertha, um, you know, who plays my, who's my mother and, and Gladys is a sheltered young woman and, and she wants to experience the world and she wants independence. But Bertha grew up, um, she grew up in a working class family. She had to earn every step, every, every, you know, everything she owns, every, every thread in, in her clothes, she had to work hard to achieve, to, to have these beautiful outfits and have, have this house and, and, and have this family. So, you know, Gladys is a bit privileged, but, um, it's just, yeah, it comes from a place of, of, of love, love and sacrifice. I think, what are you willing to sacrifice to protect the ones that you love? Absolutely. Let's talk about Gladys and Bertha for a second. I mean, poor Gladys. The first episode, she just cannot get a word in edgewise. She's just like, oh, oh. and um, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of side eye though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it led me to like realize how then observant she is. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we see, we see that she walks into a room and she takes everything in. She's listening. She's yeah. hearing, she's much more clever than I think her mother knows, or maybe her mother does know. And that's why she's, that's why she that's why <laughs> tried to keep her sheltered. She didn't come out yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's fascinating. And it's sort of this, this really intricate, complex, like needy mother daughter relationship that I think has been going on for centuries. Mm-hmm. Um, and we get to see it sort of and dissect it, digest it in this specific time, mm-hmm. which I think is really cool. Um, Absolutely. I mean, you know, Gladys is a teenager on the brink of adulthood. I think that translates. I mean, I think that's a, I think that's a battle and a struggle that any, any human could really relate to, you know, rebelling against a parental figure, whether you're, you know, it was in the 1880s or sometime and then, you know, 1950s, 1960s, or even now in 2022, you know, it's, it's sort of rebelling against the powers that be for Gladys. That's her mother and, and, and the societal expectations of, of the time she lives in, um, you know, and it's hard because sure, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a mother myself, but I have 10 nieces and nephews and I understand that protective urge to care for, for, um, the ones you have control over, you know what I mean? The ones you're supposed to be providing for. And so sure. I can relate to why Bertha wants the best for Gladys, but sometimes, sometimes parents don't know best. Sometimes they put their own desires ahead of their children's own emotions. And I think that happens a lot with Bertha and Gladys. Oh yes. I mean, we see that at the end of the, at the end of the episode, it's heartbreaking to, you know, um, Bertha's in bed and you can tell she's in so much pain. Um, and it gets me wondering that how, how the season will explore like (laughs) their relationship. And if, you know, Bertha will be honest, we'll be able to have sort of an honest conversation with her daughter, or if it will go the opposite way and it will push mm-hmm. Gladys away. I know it's going to go either way. And it's that push. And it has pull to. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's that the relationship, that. but that's the drama, the push and pull of oh, that. You know what best. I mean? It's what, it's what brings you back um, because <laughs> it's, it's really so relatable. Fun. It's so relatable. Um, 
yeah, you know, look, at the beginning, Gladys is definitely, she's a bit sheltered and, and naive and, and Gla- um, I mean, Bertha has a, a good grip on her. She wants to keep her safe. She also wants to use Gladys as a pawn in, in, in her big game to, to establish the family and society because at the end of the day, that is what is best for Gladys as well. It also helps the family, but you know, if, if Gladys can debut into high society and not just their friends from, you know, down on 30th street, if they can get, if they can get Mrs. Astor to come and, and, and whatnot, it really opens doors for not only the family, but Gladys as well. Mm-hmm. And I think that Bertha is, I mean, she's, she's, she's juggling, she's juggling it all. She's juggling the expectations of, of, I don't know, of being, of, of being a wife and being a mother and, and wanting to give the best to her daughter, but also yeah, I mean, I, I, she, she cares about, yeah, I'm trying to think of like, I'm trying to think of the things that come up and it's like, yeah, she cares about Gladys, but I think at the end of the day, Bertha knows best. Mm, oh yeah. You know, you, I'm sure you've oh, talked to those people or <laughs> talked to those parental figures or, or aunts or whoever, bigger, older sisters. And it's like, they know best yep. and it's going to be, it's going to be Gladys's fight over the course of the season to say when she's had enough and, and start speaking up for herself. Oh, I can't wait to see that. And I think that also I'm guessing that Marion will have an influence or Marion. Oh, absolutely. Favorite and, you know, will help Gladys to find her voice. Mm-hmm. Um, because I kept thinking too, how, how refreshing it is with the, with the younger generation in the show, mm-hmm. you see their need to connect, um, their need to sort of do things differently, but then also they are accepting. It's like, they're kind of sure. walking this tight balance between them. They're the not, two. they're not afraid of the new, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? They're not afraid of something new, a new experience, a new person, a new perspective. Um, I mean, I think it's, I, I, I see it in my own family, the younger generation. It's like, you see it, it's the, the America went through this in the last like four years, seeing, you know, people, families being torn apart by political things or for whatever reason. And it's just sort of, realizing yeah which which path forward is better stick to the rules and the and the regulation and and be rigid as the way it's been or try and see something from a new perspective yeah and choosing which which battles you want to partake in and choosing it's hard yeah for you and yeah. that balance between looking out for yourself and looking out for your family I think that's to your point, something that so many folks have gone through in the last mm-hmm. two, four, four, two, mm-hmm. whatever year. Yeah, the last chunk yeah. of time. Yeah. Oof. And I think that we see that with, especially with characters like Gladys and her brother and, and Marion. Um, yeah, now you're talking about Louisa's character, Marion, and, and, and how she's, you know, it's interesting because she doesn't have anybody else. You know, her, her, her father has passed away. She's left with nothing. She has to go move with her aunt. Otherwise, what is she going to do? She doesn't have any skills. You know, it's not like she could just, you know, sign up for a job application. You know what I mean? She, she is, yeah. it's, it's very limited in that time. So she goes and lives with her aunts, but it, it's inspiring, especially for Gladys's character to see a young woman so bold and free thinking and adamant about taking charge of her own life. I definitely think that's, um, inspiring for Gladys. I think it's attractive. I think change is intoxicating. Um, so I remember the moments that I got to work with Louisa and work with Mary. And I remember, I remember just being like, oh, Gladys is enamored and just like staring at Louisa. Yeah, it's cool. I think it's like, it's like, I think that's truly like, a, <laughs> to sound cheesy, like a, a woman supporting woman moment mm-hmm. of, you know, their perspective families are, you know, butting heads and are very competitive towards each other. But then you have these two young, you know, uh, on Marion's opinionated, but I think Gladys has mm-hmm. her fair share of opinions that we just haven't heard yet. Or exactly, exactly. Thank and you. And we see that they, they just go to hell with the competition, to yeah. hell with up with the Joneses, like, let's connect. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm really curious to see where that leads. Um, I'm just, it's a fabulous yeah. show and you are so beautiful oh, in it as I always. appreciate that, Meg. Thank you. Oh my gosh. So thank you so much. And this has been lovely chatting with you today. Mm-hmm. Thanks for taking the time. Oh, my pleasure. Anytime. I appreciate you. Oh my gosh. And I can't wait to see the episode that takes place in the breakers. Oh yeah. That's <laughs> going to be so exciting. I know. I love that story. Oh, that's, it was, I mean, yeah, it was, it was, it was fabulous. It was a fabulous, fabulous experience. And I think being able to film in, in some of those locations, that was, um, you know, the Vanderbilt, it's what, it's what a lot of the Russell family is based off of. It was, 
it was wild. I don't know how else yeah, to describe it. Must it. Be it was just right cool. there. You know, when you walk into that place, you're trying It's humbling in a way. It's, it's humbling. There's so much history there. And, and you know, I walked in, I'm like, I was like, I didn't prepare enough. I should have read more. I need to know more about this amazing time. Cause like you do, you do, you digest and you, and you soak in as much information as you can, but also it's just, um, yeah. yeah, you start, you start getting into the script stuff and, and, and you forget. And it was, it was amazing to go back and just be surrounded by that history. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I can, I look forward to seeing that and I look forward to the whole season. And like I said, I'm holding on. Amazing. To, you know, that means a lot. Sunday.